This is the volume that we've tried to encompass because this is where uh, mesothelia irma com commonly comes back. Uh, if it's uh, treated in one hemithorax before it's uh, metastasized to wider areas. When we started, we only treated the lower portion of the hemithorax, but we've improved our technique to now encompass the whole volume. And this is the volume we treat in patients uh, who are having complete hemithoracic radiotherapy. We usually use seven beams which come in from different angles to treat the whole hemithorax uh, and the beams modulated to intensity modulation. We treat the whole lung, we go down depending on what side of the chest is involved to include some of the liver, certainly the uh, area around the diaphragm is well covered and the mediastinum as well. This uh, is one of our more recent patients who's been a, a valuable on PET scans afterwards. And this just shows how effective radiotherapy can be. It was a 72-year-old man with an epithelioid mesothelioma who, whose only surgery was a pleurodesis followed by chemotherapy for six cycles of cisplatinum and pemetrexed. And he, had get, he was getting progressive disease when he was referred to me. He had radiotherapy to this volume up to 60 gray in February this year and this was the PET scan that we used to plan his treatment. You can see just how extensive it is and why we opted to treat the whole hemithorax. After three months, he had another PET scan, and this is the result of uh, the radiotherapy. And you can see how the activity has diminished, particularly this lump around the liver. And because he had a high blood level of mesothelin, which is unusual in our patients at diagnosis, we were able to measure that and after three months it had fallen from 25 to 13 and after another three months it had gone down to 6.5. Now you can see here that there's been further regression in the active mesothelioma but what has shown up is this area in the, er, the lung that we irradiated which we attribute to radiation pneumonitis. This wasn't causing enough symptoms to worry the patient. He was still fairly active, he didn't have a cough he was doing long walks and even exercising on a treadmill, but uh, it's something that does uh, in make it difficult to inter interpret our responses if we're dealing only with PET scan activity. And the total glycolytic volume in this case went from almost 1,200 to 600, and here you can see it's gone up to 1,600. But we think at the moment his disease that's been irradiated is very well controlled and we'll continue to follow him up. So our program at the moment involves doing simulations uh, as it does in, as is done in most modern radiotherapy centres. We do PET scans in the treatment position. We outline the area at risk and the area that's active on PET scan, as you can see outlined in the red, gets a higher dose than the remainder of the hemithorax. We spare as much of the liver, the spinal cord and other lung as we can. We come up with a plan which is acceptable and then we uh, start treating the patient. Most sessions go for five days a week for six weeks and we do daily imaging on the machine with a cone beam CT scanner to evaluate that the patient is set up in the right position and um, make any adjustments during the course that may interfere with our final results. Now, the, this particular patient uh, on this CT scan shows the initial simulation scan in MOVE followed by the CT scan from the machine on the last day of his treatment. And you can see that there's been some uh, loss of weight around the edges, but not enough to influence our treatment delivery. And uh, I've outlined here the volume that's been irradiated. You can see how much down below the diaphragm we go and uh, the area that gets a higher dose is outlined in the light blue. And for that particular day, to make sure it was centred where we wanted to, we had to move his position in three dimensions by at most uh, 0.44 of a centimetre. So the first myth that I like to address is whether mesothelioma is radioresistant or not. This is the data from cell lines of mesothelioma cells showing that uh, mesothelioma has a sensitivity somewhere between small cell and non-small cell lung cancers. This is one particular patient who had a very good response. 
Uh, this was the area that we irradiated back in 2007. You can see the tumour is so extensive here that it's pushing the mediastinum across to the other side and there's a nodule out here. Uh, two months after he received 50 gray to this volume, this is his subsequent CT scan. And you can see just how much early regression there's been. The mediastinum has moved across, but unfortunately he died four months after with disease on the other side and he'd already failed chemotherapy uh, and a partial chlorectomy before he saw me. This patient also had a good response. It is unusual with a stage four tumour and it was sarcomatoid, um, desmoplastic sarcomatoid tumour. Both of these deposits were biopsy. They were infiltrating the ribs and he was getting a lot of pain up here from a brachial plexus type picture. So he refused chemotherapy. The surgeons didn't want to operate so I gave both of those deposits 60 gray to this volume and this is the result of the PET scan afterwards showing the radiation pneumonitis in the volume we treated but a reduction in the total glycolytic volume and uh, 12 months afterwards he had a complete response in the area we treated but unfortunately developed metastases on the other side. At this point he had chemotherapy but unfortunately that didn't work and these are the chest x-rays to correspond with the PET scan showing just how fast the tumour responded. This is two weeks after we started his radiotherapy. His pain in the shoulder improved, he improved. He was able to lie much more comfortably for the latter part of his treatment. And we followed this up. You can see why there was no activity on the PET scan. And this was uh, the last chest x-ray we did where there was one metastasis here and another one here. So we've... Uh, persisted with our treatment as we've found that it's been effective and not produced uh, major toxicities in our patients. The ones who I've assessed so far with total glycolytic volumes are 14 patients, some of whom have survived after radiotherapy which was given at time zero up to five uh, or six years afterwards. These white dots are the timing of the PET scans. So they all had one before treatment, they all had one three to six months after, and we've done follow-up PET scans in some patients who were able to have it. Um, and this is the results of the total glycolytic volume analysis. On average, there's a 60% reduction in activity uh, in 11 patients. Now, we haven't been successful, of course, because most of these patients have gone on to have progressive disease, which has mainly been uh, in the bit of lung that we didn't irradiate or the other lung or some other part of the body. There were a few cases when we, we were using the old technique where we had to compromise on normal tissue where we've had some marginal misses. And this particular patient, because we didn't want to damage the liver, turned out to have a recurrence here on the PET scan with no other disease. And this was the patient I showed you before with the sarcomatoid mesothelioma, who because we gave a lower dose to spare the spinal cord, developed a recurrence at this point.